Thank you for joining us on Journey to 600. Today we're going to be going over different types of narrow conditions. First we're going to be going over fibromyalgia. A big characteristic of this narrow condition is the localized tender points in multiple different areas. I've provided a chart with potential tender points. Signs and symptoms include heat intolerance, which is why our treatment would be pool therapy in cold water. Next is complex regional pain syndrome. This is a hypersensitivity to stimuli that would not normally be painful. And to the left, I have included signs and symptoms of the CRPS. Also, we have myofascial pain syndrome. The characteristic for this one is it has trigger points and signs and symptoms include referred pain. This differs from fibromyalgia because fibromyalgia has tender points. HIV encephalopathy. It is one cause of dementia in people infected with HIV. Signs and symptoms include memory loss, confusion, and disorientation. Physical symptoms include unsteadiness, clumsiness, and shaky hands. Next, we have botulism, which I actually had not heard of until I started studying for my boards. It is caused by ingesting of bacteria found in improperly canned food. Signs and symptoms include weakness, double vision, dyspnea, and weak trunk musculature. Next, we have Huntington's disease. This affects the central nervous system, specifically the basal ganglia and the cerebral cortex. Sensory will be normal, and people are often diagnosed between the ages of 30 to 35 years old. Signs and symptoms include chorea movements, ataxia, rigidity, and it is fatal within 15 to 20 years. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS for short, is a chronic degenerative disease that can include upper and lower motor neurons. Physical therapy treatment includes low-level exercises, range of motion, mobility training, bro bronchial hygiene, and energy conservation. It is more common in men aged 40 to 70 years old. Sensory will be normal and it is fatal within two to five years after diagnosis. Next, we have Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS. It's possibly an autoimmune response to previous respiratory infection, flu, immunizations, or surgery. Signs and symptoms include distal symmetrical motor weakness, mild distal sensory impairment, and paresis. This progresses to uh, upper extremity and head, muscle and respiratory paralysis, absent deep tendon reflex, and inability to swallow or speak. It is more common in males and white people. Peak signs and symptoms at about two to four weeks. It is very important that we check skin integrity because we do not want breakdown of skin while they are unable to move because we do not want pressure ulcers, which can get infected, which can lead to sepsis. It's a long list and it's a road we don't want to go down. Treatments include avoiding fatigue and teaching energy conservation methods. This next one, post-polio syndrome, is very popular, so we're going to talk about it. It is more likely to occur in females than males. Signs and symptoms include asymmetrical weakness. Sensory will be normal. You want to avoid fatigue and teach energy conservation techniques. Horner syndrome is a disrupted nerve pathway on one side from the brain to the face and eye. Signs and symptoms include droopy eyelid, pupillary constriction, and lack of sweating on the side of the face. Myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disorder that affects the transmission of neuromuscular signals. 
Signs and symptoms include muscle weakness, rapid muscle fatigue with activity, and rest quickly improves this muscle function. And you will find that reflexes and sensation are normal. It is more common in women aged 20 to 30 years old. And treatment can be through medication and avoiding overhead activity and progressing slowly with your therapy treatments. Multiple sclerosis is demyelination of the myelin sheaths in the central nervous system. There can be a variety of different symptoms. It is more common in women aged 20 to 50 years old. As for physical therapy treatment, it is important to exercise in the morning, alternate aerobic and strength training days, and avoid fatigue. There are four different types of MS, so I use these little charts, graphs to kind of help me remember which ones have exacerbations, which ones progress faster, and uh, which ones have um, remitting. Just for a little background on these charts, I want to point out that the peaks in some of the charts are exacerbations, and then the little divots down would be when the patient is remitting, so their symptoms aren't as bad. First, I'm going to be talking about primary progressive, which is characterized by symptoms that become worse over time without periods of exacerbations or remissions. So they're constantly just at a steady state of getting worse. Next, we're going over secondary progressive. As you can see, a patient will have an exacerbation and then a period of remission, but that next exacerbation will be worse than the first. And their remission will be better, but not as good as the first remission. So as you can see, they're progressively getting worse over time. Next is progressive relapsing. As you can see, they're going to have exacerbations with small little remissions and then another exacerbation, and they are progressively getting worse. Then finally, we have relapsing remitting. So as you can see, a patient will have an exacerbation of symptoms and then a remission and then an exacerbation and then a remission. And as you can see, it is not as progressive as the previous three charts. Okay, we have arrived at our first practice question. Please take your time. Okay, please pause the video if you need more time. Okay, the correct answer is B. So let's read the question and go over our answer choices. The patient is an elderly adult female who presents with asymmetrical weakness and normal sensory. Her labs, test, and imaging all come back normal. What neurological disorder does she most likely have? Myasthenia gravis signs and symptoms include muscle weakness, which is more proximal, rapid muscle fatigue, and sensation would be normal. But with myasthenia gravis, you would see what it is in blood work. So her labs are coming back normal. She most likely does not have myasthenia gravis. Next is postpolar syndrome, which we know is our correct answer. But why would her labs and tests and imaging all come back normal? The thing about postpolio syndrome is there is no specific test to rule in this diagnosis. You have to exclude and know their past medical history and do a physical exam 
the big thing about post polio syndrome is that the patient most likely had polio and they recovered from it and now they are having symptoms from it 15 to 40 years after the infection and recovery. All right, ALS. Well, ALS, depending on if you have upper or and or lower motor neuron involvement, if you have the lower motor neuron involvement, you will see asymmetrical muscle weakness, but you will be able to diagnose ALS with um, EMG testing and nerve conduction testing. And lastly, we have botulism, which is the um, bacteria found in improperly canned food. Signs and symptoms include weakness and double vision and uh, cranial nerve involvement. It can be diagnosed with laboratory testing, so that is not our correct answer. So B is our correct answer. If you need more time, please pause the video. Okay, the correct answer is A, botulism. Okay, let's take a look at this question. Some of the key points include the patient comes to you after a camping trip and complains of weakness and double vision. During your evaluation, you find that they have cranial nerve involvement and, mus and shrunk musculature weakness. What kind of neuro condition do they most likely have? The correct answer is A. These are all signs and symptoms of botulism. And the fact that the patient went camping, you can assume that maybe they ate some improperly canned food. Next is fibromyalgia, which signs and symptoms include sleep disturbances, fatigue, and um, deep tendon reflexes can be present, and patient would have heat intolerance. They would also have localized tender points. This question doesn't really pertain to the patient's current signs and symptoms, so you could go ahead and mark this one right off. C is ALS, which we spoke about in our previous question. So if you want a deep dive, you could go back to that. But we will go over D, which is a GBS. Uh, its signs and symptoms include distal symmetrical motor weakness, which then progresses up to the upper extremities in the head. This also does not really pertain to the signs and symptoms that we see in our patient. So you can mark that one off. Please pause if you need more time. Okay, the correct answer is D. Let's go over this question. Your patient has a medical history of multiple sclerosis. The patient reports that they will have flare-ups of MS but will completely recover from their symptoms. What type of MS does this patient most likely have? I dove pretty deep into these different types of MS in a previous slide, so please feel free to go back to that one and digest and go over, but I will say the big key point with this one is the fact that the patient has flare-ups and completely recovers. The other three 
are progressive. They get worse over time. Their symptoms get worse. Their remissions aren't as recovered. So that's your little hint that it is not the other three. Thank you so much for joining us on Journey to 600. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications for our next video.